In this video, we will see how to model flat slab with openings, drop panels and column capitals in Midas engine. We will see here different methods of quickly modeling flat slab. Here we have vertical members, columns and shear walls. First, let's see how to model flat slab using periphery beams. For periphery beams, we can simply use import function from the structure tab. Select our file. Select the layer. Now to assign the member type and section property to our to our periphery beam center line, we will check on type. The type will be beam and the section property will select as SB400 by 600. To define the section properties, we can click on this three dotted box. Next, we can insert our center line at a particular insert point. We'll keep it zero itself. Next, the scale. The unit of the AutoCAD drawing file and the unit of our Midas engine file shall be identical. If not, then we need to provide a scale factor. So if the unit is identical, we have to put the scale factor as 1. And then we'll click on OK. Here we go, we got our periphery beams. Now let us go ahead and create flat slab. For that, we'll go to the member tab and click on flat slab. We can select the member set to which it belongs. We'll select the story set. We need to select the thickness property for our flat slab. The material property is associated with the thickness property itself. And then we'll have to select the objects. So let us go to the front view and select our periphery beams. We can see over here in the isometric view the preview of the flat slab. To finish the definition, we'll click on apply and continue. Here we go, we have got our flat slab created. Another method of creating the flat slab is by using draw tool. The draw tool is snapping on to the periphery points of our flat slab and creating the flat slab. Instead of snapping, we can also provide the coordinates. Now let us see how to create the flat slab if there are no periphery beams. In such a case, we can use body lines. Body in Midas engine is an arbitrary non-structural element that can be used for various functions. One such function is to create the flat slab by selecting the periphery body lines. The body lines can also be imported by using the DWG or DXF import function. We'll open up the same file, use the same layer set, and instead of giving any properties, we'll keep, it, keep the type as unchecked and go ahead with insert point and scale factor and we'll click on OK. Now let us go to the member tab and flat slab function to create our flat slab using by select tool. We will go to the front view and select all the periphery body lines. The software will show us with a preview of the flat slab to be created and then we can go ahead click on apply and continue. That's it. We are done with our flat slab without any periphery beams. Now, when it comes to a typical floor plan, there is load variation observed. In such cases, instead of creating dummy areas and then applying separate pressure loads on it, we can simply have a divided flat slab. This can be done using body lines also. We can import body lines that divide flat slab area into number of panels. So let's do that. From the structure tab, 
DWG DXF import will open up the file that contains all the body lines that are used that are going to be useful for dividing our flat slab create the flat slab by member flat slab go to the front view select all the body lines we'll see the preview over here and click on apply and continue we can press escape to finish with our flat slab definition we can see over here now different panels created automatically by the program with the help of the body lines let us now see how to create openings in flat slab after the division of flat slab we can simply select the location of the openings where the flat slab have been divided and press delete from the keyboard another way of creating an opening is by using the opening tool under the member tab it is easier to create the openings in story mode in the story mode we can go to the member tab and then click on the opening tool and start creating our openings there are two methods for openings one is by select tool and by using the by draw function when we use by draw function we can simply snap on the grids and create our opening we can even provide coordinates by ourselves this is good when it comes to a polygonal type of opening but what if there is a curvature what if there is a circular opening in such a case it is not easy to create small small lines and create a circular opening by using by draw function so here we have got by select tool by using this by select tool we can simply select any periphery beam or we can select body lines and then click on apply to create so let's see how we can create the body in the body tab the body lines body faces arcs circles ellipses all these can be created on our floor plan for creating the sketches on a plane we need to be on either the plane mode or story mode so let us begin we can create a circle with center point and a point on the circumference or we can use three points to draw the circle let us create by using center point so here we go we click on one center and we can either click on the circumference or we can provide over here the diameter distance so let's say it is 1.5 meters and we can press enter and we've got our circular body we can press escape to go out of the command now to create the opening we'll go to the member tab go to the opening function and by using by select tool we can select this body and click on apply and continue so here we go we have got our circular opening created in our flat slab one thing is important that the software performs mesh while performing the analysis this mesh is under our control completely we can have global mesh of one size and we can also have local meshing local meshing would be required in such kind of circular openings this local meshing is controlled by using mesh size control that we can see over here in the analysis tab and mesh size control firstly let me show you that we can control the global meshing of our flat slab from the analysis settings mesh tab 2d mesh and the methods there are three methods length division and 
smart size we can use the length and we can have one meter as the global mesh size further for our circular opening we'll provide the size control by using mesh size control function we can select our edge and we can select over here the method if it's with interval length number of divisions grading length uh, grading ratio and so on so the length which we will put over here for the edge is going to be let's say 0.1 we can see the preview over here. We'll see the points, number of points created around. The more number of points, the more smooth our opening will be. So I think this is good enough for our opening. And we'll click on OK by providing the seeds. Now let us run the analysis and check the mesh size. So here we'll go to the display mode, mesh, and click on mesh edge. So as you can see over here, the software has created mesh size of 1 meter for the entire flat slab except for the location of the opening, circular opening. So it has taken care that there is the mesh size is reduced gradually from 1 meter to 0 0.1 meter and created a smooth opening in the flat slab so this is how we can create openings in flat slab now let us look at how to create drop panels in midas engine for that i'll go back to the pre-processing mode and to create the drop panels we can go to the member tab and click on drop panel drop panels we can create by providing the name of the drop panel, providing thickness for the drop panel. This is including the thickness of the slab. And then we need to define the drop panel area. The area can be defined by clicking on add and using either by draw function or the by select tool. If we use the by draw function, then we need to provide the coordinates or snap. If we use the by select tool, then we need to use face bodies. The face bodies can be created from the body tab and face. Or we can simply import the faces from a DWG or DXF import function. So we can select the drop panels layer. Layer can be selected. Basically, these are polylines, closed polylines, and they are to be inserted at given location with a proper scale factor. And we'll click on OK. So we can see over here, these are the faces automatically created with the importing of, of the drawing file already had. Now we will go ahead to the member tab, click on drop panel, provide thickness for our drop panel, click on add to define the drop panel area, use the by select tool and select all the area face bodies and click on apply. After clicking on apply we can see over here different areas. We can click on them and see them highlighted. And then we'll click on OK to finish the assignment of our drop panels. These are depicted with the help of blue translucent boxes. The thickness will be assigned to our flat slab at the drop panels after performing the analysis. So as you can see over here now, after performing the analysis, the software has automatically assigned a thickness of 0.5 meters to our drop panel area of flat slab. 
This is how we can apply the drop panels or create the drop panels for our flat slab. Now let us look at how to create column capitals. Basically, column capitals are useful when there is enlargement of column at the flat slab or it can be useful when we want to consider the offset for the flat slab with respect to the column so that there is no overlapping at the junction of the flat slab and the column. Column capital is also used for considering rigid zone between the junction of the column and the flat slab. To define the column capital, we have to go for boundary tab and then click on column capital. Column capital is always assigned to columns. So the objects to be selected are columns. So I'll go to the front view and we can select all the columns. Then we can provide the location for the column capitals. It, the column capitals could be at the top of the column. Uh, when it comes to foundation, it could be at the bottom of the column. When it's a lower level where at the bottom there, uh, there's foundation, at the top there's flat slab, we can use both function. So we'll be using top over here. Next is the shape of the column capital. So as I mentioned earlier, the column capital could be enlarged or enlarged column sections shape. If that's the case, then we can select either the rectangular type or we can select the circular type and provide the dimensions. If we are going to consider the offsets and the rigid zones, then we need to use the by column section. The software will detect the column section property and use those dimensions over here for making the shape. Next, for column capital, there are options available like uh, if you just want to apply the offset value for the column or we also want to input the rigid links to consider the rigid zone between the flat slab and the column. It's practical to provide the auto input of rigid link and the offset value also. The rigid link, we can constrain all the translations and the rotations and click on OK to finish the column capital definition. The column capital can be seen over here with blue periphery and also the rigid links with dotted lines. And now after performing the analysis, we can see how the program is going to create the mesh taking care of the column capital and accordingly excluding it from the design. Another function for having the column capital is that the punching shear check of the flat slab or the drop panel will be performed with respect to the column capital section shape. So if you have got enlarged column, then the punching shear will be with respect to the enlarged column property. So this is how we can model flat slabs with openings drop panels and column capitals in Midas engine.